Take a look around you. Notice the people in this room. Your friends, family, peers, teachers. Now think for a minute. Think how lucky you are to be in their presence today. Why do I say you are lucky? Humans have been around for nearly 200,000 years, and it is amazing to realize that you are sharing your life with the people around you today. I have thought about this quite a lot, and the randomness of it all has made me start to appreciate everything in my life that I'm lucky for. Now, I want you to look around again, and this time, think about if anyone around you ever worries about where their next meal is coming from. Most of you probably didn't find anyone who lives with this constant worry. Like me, everyone in this room is lucky in that for all of us, food is a constant in our life. We forget that food is a privilege. The same randomness that connects us as people living here today extends to our shared fortune as people living in a community where food is not a major concern. In my opinion, hunger is the most pressing issue we face today, and the first step in solving this problem is being aware that someone in your community is going hungry right now. In the last two years of my life, I have met hundreds of people from countries all over the world. What has allowed me to meet so many people is my love for math and science and current ambition to end world hunger. I have made it my goal to work towards establishing food as a moral right for every human and not merely some random privilege that we are lucky enough to be born into. I have traveled near and far to meet people who share the same goal as me. Most recently, I traveled to Des Moines, Iowa for the World Food Prize Conference, which is basically the Nobel Prize for food science. There, I was able to meet and collaborate with scientists and policymakers from all over the world who have inspired my current ambition to end world hunger. This past summer, I traveled to Beijing, China for eight weeks. I was given this opportunity by the World Food Prize to join graduate students at the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences to research rice genetics to increase crop yields under adverse climate conditions. Ultimately, my lab mates and I were using our love for science and research to help feed people. Every day, my lab mates and I shared tea and food together. Our meals were never scheduled and were timed around whenever our experiments were running. However, these random meetings were some of the most memorable and meaningful encounters to me. You see, it was when we really connected. Our conversations ranged from talking about movies, to music, to sports. However, we came together regardless of our background. You see, it wasn't the science that brought us closer together. That was only how we met. It was this ca- these casual conversations over food in which we really learned about one another and our different cultures and perspectives. It was quite amazing, actually. You see, I came to Beijing to learn about the importance of food, the importance of food in the lab and in the field. However, it was through social encounters in which I learned about the importance of food in the world. It opened my eyes to the fact that a lack of food takes away the opportunity for people to connect with one another. You see, at a biological level, we need food to survive. But as social organisms, we need food to connect with one another. This has made me realize how lucky I am to have both food and people to share this food with. After my internship, My first few days back in the U.S. felt strange. After being in an environment where every day and night people spent their time researching ways to solve world hunger, it was weird to be back in Maine, where no one even talked about hunger. It got me thinking, what do we, as people in America, or even as people in Cape Elizabeth, know what it feels like to be hungry? 
We may go a few hours, possibly a day, without eating. But imagine a few days, a week, or even a month without food. Yes, we know what, food, what hunger is theoretically. Adults tell us to eat all the food off our plates in consideration of starving people somewhere. Many of us volunteer at soup kitchens and even donate to food drives. However, the truth is, we don't truly appreciate the abundance of food around us, nor truly know what it feels like to be hungry. Constant access to food should not be a random privilege that we are lucky enough to be born into. We must make sure that every human has access to food regardless of their circumstances. What did we do to be so lucky to have food in our lives? The answer is random luck. We are simply lucky that we have food in our lives. I mean, what did we do to be here? Why isn't some starving kid or starving family not sitting in your seats or living your lives? We must make sure that every living human has access to food regardless of their circumstances. So what can we do? Well, we can start by being aware. Food scarcity is less about food production and more about, is more a problem about food, unequal distribution of food. Here are some things you can do to help. Support your local farms to keep farms alive. Donate to food pantries frequently and regularly, and not just during the holidays. Participate in a hunger banquet to learn more about and experience the unequal distribution of hunger. Talk about it. I cannot do this alone. Eradicating world's hunger will require a global effort, starting with the people in this room today. Thank you.